Rama Ramsey is a YouTuber, the guy on Twitter who talks about football all the time. And um, professionally, I am an inbound marketer through and through. So if you don't know about in inbound marketing, you might want to check it out because that's what I do for a living. I started playing football in 2011. Around that time we were living in Umoja Estate, back when Umoja was very new. Um, I would play, it used to be Umoja Estate versus, like you have like Umoja Inako kids versus, you know, Tena Estate kids versus Greenfield kids. You know, just different hoods playing against each other. And then after a while guys got too busy because we wanted to play football more. We found ourselves crossing that K KCC um, field. If you know about KCC and where the factory is, so basically Moja, when you get to Moja 2, you cross the road on the other side, you go through a field, there's a KCC factory there, and then there's like a small slum there with a pitch. So we used to cross over from Moja all the way to Karibangi South to play football. My mom never knew about it, but I love the game. So I joined my side without my mom's knowledge. And I used to go play games until she found out and she flipped. But I started playing, in, so I can say, I started playing around the time I was 11, like serious football. I started off as a playmaker, the number six role, but then there were other playmakers in the team who were better than me. And so, actually no, I started as a right back. And... Um, there were other people who could defend better than me because of the, the maram, it was maram, it was a gravel pitch. So I found it really difficult to tackle people because, you know, I'm a pretty boy. So pretty boys don't do such things, I guess. <laughs> but at the time I was a pretty boy. Um, so I couldn't tackle guys much. And so there were guys who had that thing, you know, that nothing to lose and just tackle people on a maram pitch. And so I was moved from the right back the position I started in to the playmaker at number six and that's the position I played I think till high school now I made high school I was in the B team I think for my high school don't remember but I know I was part of the team growing up I looked up to different players I know um, in terms of defense Maldini was probably one of the best players I I have ever watched, you know, you see a lot of him. Um, I would say Ruth Gullit because there was a lot of, you know, football made in Germany. Um, Deutsche Welle when I was growing up, there was always that progeny. Us guys used to know when we were growing up. When we were kids, we used to know football is a German thing because that's all KBC used to show. Um, yeah, so some of those, the, the guys I used to um, watch. Uh, some of the players you looked up to when I was growing up, yeah, um, David Beck. David Beckham made me support Manchester United, so before, I mean, he was just an amazing winger. Like, for me, the crossing, you know, life outside the, the pitch. I think he's one of the guys to actually commercialize his image as, as, as an athlete. One of the first, first guys to do it in, in, in the football world, and so I respect him a lot for that. I'd say my favorite coach is Eric Ten Hag. The Ajax coach, um, I think he's done a lot with that squad. They look very great. There's a lot of youth and experience, and they play a lot of attractive football, very beautiful football. And just adds to the fact that you can see how many um, Ajax players who played the Europa final against Man United and who played in the Champions League um, the last two seasons have actually made it to other clubs. Um, Juve, Barcelona, everyone has just been going after them. So I think he's done a really good job. In terms of my favorite player, I would say Pogba right now at the moment because Pogba is a complete player. He can defend, he can attack, he can break, you know, opponent, you know, um, build up play, he can, cre he, can, he can create, he can score, he's a complete footballer.
closest person when it comes to um, to that is probably your Bruno, Bruno Fernandez, which I'm trying to see how they look like playing together. It should be interesting. I think for me, one of the biggest achievements I've done is just being a stand-up guy. Like being a dad, I never saw myself as a dad growing up. Um, I saw myself, yeah, when the time was right, no, blah 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 blah, but. It's a different experience when you actually get to, you know, being a dad and not, you know, I've had to make a lot of sacrifices, so those are made sacrifices that I don't think, or I rather I never believed I could be able to make, and so that's, to me, that's one of my biggest achievements, just being a dad and, and, and thinking about all the sacrifices I've had to make, you know, personal stuff that I've had to put on hold just to make sure that I'm the best in that front because everything has its timing, so I would say that's one of my biggest achievements. Well, I started drawing, I can remember in kindergarten when my, when my mom came for a parents' day and my, the, the teacher looked at my potato prints and told my mom that I should go and display my work at um, Sarit Centre. And to me that was amazing. That's the first time that's the first time I realized I had a gift. Then I think the first time I noticed that people know that I know how to draw was in class three when we were doing um, I think read with us Mr. Kamau and the bus and I drew Mr. Kamau so accurately with the bus and Tom there with Mary eating a banana and the class was almost hysterical about how my skills are up there. So I've, I've drawn my whole life. I can remember back in kindergarten when you know my teacher made those comments. So I've been drawing my whole life. I think for me it comes off the fact that when I was growing up, we were made to believe you'll never make a living out of art. And if you are a sports person, you are going to enjoy your life, but then you're going to have a very, you know, mediocre like average life because that's how the attitude towards sports is so I find like a lot of times people have to backdate their birth certificates in order to get their chances and you know go abroad and finally their dreams but as long as you do it here you know there's nothing that will ever come out of it so inspired me to do the piece graduating to no jobs um, also known as unemployment is the fact that you know guys are going to school and they're coming out and you know they're realizing that the world has changed it's changing so fast um, in 10 years the professions that we know now won't be there and will be people will be doing different types of jobs and so a lot of guys graduating are graduating with the mindset that you know that degree is going to get someone a job which is um, ideally a very skewed view of life because it's almost as if you're setting yourself up for you know failure so that's that's one of the reasons that I worked on that piece um, I've seen my friends struggle I've struggled myself and you know it, it's just one of those things that you realize that education is great but it's only great if you're going to apply it to make whatever you want to do in life better um, it's not, it doesn't guarantee you a job because jobs are scarce and they are difficult to get for everyone. Um, I would only allow my child to pursue sports and arts if they are also doing school as well because with football you can retire at um, 30 and you're seeing now punditry being one of those things. So if, for example, if my child wanted to pursue um, football or basketball, I just ask them to do journalism as well. So when they retire, they become a sports journalist or a pundit. I would, um, I would, I would encourage them to do actually medicine, so that when they retire, they become a specialist in athlete, athlete injuries and stuff, and how to you know make sure athletes are are catered for and and recover on time. So it's just a pairing. I don't think that the arts or sports can be looked at as you know these things that you do in isolation i think 
art is there to enhance your sports because you're more creative and then you know I, I don't think you I would let my kids just pursue just sports and sports and say you, you all you're going to do is football what if football fails what if you get an injury what do you do in your life so no I, I don't think I would allow that um, For me, I would ask my kids what their plan is because it's in my best interest that they are able to achieve their plans. So if they want to be an artist professional or they want to be a sports person or an athlete, professional athlete, I would just ask them, like honestly, what age do you think you want to be or what, what age do you want to turn pro so that I kind of relieve the pressure off them. It's better when you look at it from, you know, the day you want to go pro and then you work backwards so if they tell if they told me I want to be a pro by the time I'm 25 then I can say before then what we need to do is build up into your um, 10,000 hours so if it's, it's gonna take us five hours of practice or two hours of practice every day for you to be able to achieve that then that's the direction I would take with them because if you decide you're going to be an artist for a living then you might as well be the best artist that ever lived. If you decide you're going to be an, um, an athlete for a living, you might as well be the best athlete in that field that you've chosen, and that sport that you've chosen, right? Then the next question is, in respect to the picture graduating to no jobs, do you think it's time for Kenyans to switch up and instead of decrease focus on their talents? Uh, um, I'm one of those people who believes that one talent is very ambiguous and talent is another way of explaining people's hard work when you can't explain how someone can become good at something just by practicing every day. I don't believe I'm talented at art because I look at people who do the same thing I do and they're guys who are way better than me. And for me the difference between myself and them is the fact that probably because they do that full time of um, full time they get to practice more than I do so that's the reason we, we, that's the reason there's a bit of a gap between us um, in terms of how my art looks and how theirs looks it's just about of how much time do you use and how much time do you spend practicing doing the same thing over and over again because once you get it right you can always switch it up and you can always customize it and make it yours by um, just adding on a few things here and there but I don't believe that um, talent per se. I think it's just hard work, right? Mm -hmm. It depends on what type of sports you're watching because I'll tell you for free, if there's anybody representing Kenya in swimming or skiing or what type of others, fencing for example, they're not going to be from the lower or middle class. They're going to be from the upper to, you know, wealthy and affluent um, class of the country. So for me, I believe that the reason why we think a lot of athletes come from the lower and middle class is because the most popular sports tend to appeal to the lower and middle class. So you find a lot of kids playing football in Eastlands, playing basketball and stuff. But then if you go to um, places where kids play things like, I don't know, lacrosse, or polo then it's always going to be rich kids so they're, they're still interested in sports just that the sports that are popular with the masses tend to attract the masses and so you see that you know it, it kind of represents and also reflects in terms of um, who you see playing on the pitch and stuff like that um, I would say if I start talking about talent, I'll confuse people, so I'm not going to say talent. If your child has an interest in something, make sure they get the hours into it. If they really have an interest in sports, if they really have an interest in art, then you kind of have to have that conversation with them and let them know that for them to go pro in arts and for them to go pro in athletics, they need to put in their 10,000 hours. So. If you're going to ask them and start that conversation by what age would you like to go pro then you can walk backwards and tell them for you to go pro at this age this is how much time you need to put in 
on a daily basis. Um, I did my own calculation with regards to my art and I know I have a lot of areas to improve. I have a lot of improvements to be done. And I did my calculations just recently and I found out I'm between three to 5,000 short of you know my 10,000 hours where I can say now I'm world class level. I have about three to 5,000 um, hours left and I've been drawing my whole life. And I found out if I draw every day for one hour, it's going to take me three to five years to hit my 10,000 hours. So I'm very comfortable with that. I know I can't draw one hour every day. So that figure is probably going to stretch to the next 10 years. So I don't mind being a professional artist who's world renowned when I'm in my 40s, when I'm in my 50s. I can live with that. But when it comes to something like sports, you want to hit those 10,000 hours when you're very young. So if you see your child, and if your child has decided they're going to be doing football, let them get in early enough so that they hit those hours and they go pro the sooner the better, right? And that is it for me. So thank you for watching. It's been chill, you know, love for B. Shout out to Toti, shout out to Ngoshi. It's been a pleasure always. Um, See you guys on the next video.